Hello and welcome back to the Beefy Tech Channel. Today I bring you a fun setup video for the 7800X3D. What you see over here is my test bench rig running the Modern Warfare 2 benchmark and scoring a tremendous amount of FPS with a 7800X3D and 7900XDX. Zooming in on these scores, you can see that the 7800X3D and 7900XDX are definitely pulling their weight in the Modern Warfare 2 Call of Duty benchmark. Over here, you can see exactly the specs that I'm running and the GPU driver. If you're wondering about the GPU driver, I'm using an old one because it's the best for the benchmark. But as you can see, 518 average FPS is absolutely nutty for 7800X 3D. And you can indeed see the date that I did the test in to see that it's legit. Let me walk you through exactly how to set everything up. But right before I do that, let me just say that you really, really want to be on Windows 10 Pro if you want your 7000X3D processor to perform at its best. Before you do virtually anything, if you're already on Windows 11, I highly, highly recommend you switch to Windows 10. I've only had a couple days with this 7800X3D, so I have not really fully finalized the overclocks, but they're nearly there. Thus, today I'll only be showing you the basic setup steps, specifically so you can get started. You're going to want to download the AMD chipset drivers, which you just get by uh, googling AMD chipset drivers, and then going over to their website and clicking on chipsets, and then proceeding to find AM5, and once you're on AM5, select the correct motherboard type you have. I have a B650 motherboard, so I'm going to select the B650 and click submit. Once I've done that, you're going to want to select between Windows 10 and 11, but as I've mentioned, you really, really want to be on Windows 10 for this. Select the latest drivers and click download. Once you've done that, you're going to have a little tab open up and you're going to have to wait for a short while. Meanwhile, the download process continues and you will have to follow through with the complete install of the chipset drivers. But let me just say, it's not always best to have the chipset drivers installed. So ideally, test your games without the chipset drivers and then install the chipset drivers and also test your games and see which one's better for you. But because mine's better with them on, I've tested everything with them on. For the purposes of this video, I'm not going to continue the install given I already have the chipset drivers installed, but for you guys that are currently doing it as I'm doing it, you're just going to want to click install and wait for the process to begin. And the most important part of the entire process after you're done with the chipset drivers is installing your BIOS update. Why? Because without it, you risk even burning your CPU alive as a lot of the earlier BIOS updates are horrible. Just type your motherboard name, add BIOS update after it, and then the first thing that pops up should be the correct thing. It varies on motherboard vendor. For MSI users, you're just going to have to go to the BIOS section and of your exact motherboard, mind you, and then just select the latest BIOS update and download it. Now, just one thing to mention, a lot of these could also be beta BIOSes, so just be careful of that, but a 1007C I found is perfectly fine to download. Because I'm quite a dumbass, I forgot to plug in a USB, but you're going to want to plug in a USB for this part specifically so you can then drag the BIOS file onto the USB. For MSI users, you don't even need to rename it or anything, it's just fine to use, but for ASUS, you might have to use the ASUS rename file before you do actually update your BIOS. Once you've entered your BIOS by spamming the delete key on a restart, you're going to want to go to mFlash or ASUS Easy Flash or just whatever flashing option your motherboard has, and then click on it and it's going to take you to a separate part of the uh, BIOS where you're then going to have to select your USB and select the exact folder with the BIOS update and then just click yes I want to update. Yet again I have already installed the latest BIOS so I'm not going to do it again but you just want to follow through and wait until the process is over. Now begins the whole BIOS section of how to optimize this to work perfectly you're just going to set your OC Explorer mode over to Expert. This won't really make a huge difference, but it unlocks all of the BIOS features you'd want to use for overclocking also. I personally do not use XMP or Expo, but you should just enable Expo and then take your DRAM frequency that is stated by the Expo profile and essentially do one third of that for the FCLK frequency. So if your Expo profile is at 6000 megahertz, you're going to want to do 2000 megahertz on the FCLK and then follow up with the UCLK equals mem clock, no matter which one you choose. Over here, you're going to see my voltages. If you're overclocking, I recommend just going with AMD overclocking and then do 1.3 volts on the SOC. But you could also do far less than this if you have a 6000 or 6200 megahertz kit. 
With that said though, the voltages you're seeing for the DRAM are mine and mine only. You cannot copy them because they will not work from kit to kit most of the time unless you have an ADI kit. If you do, you can copy my exact timings and voltages one to one and should be fine. Essentially, if you bought a 7600 MHz kit and detuned it to 6400 like me, those timings will work. I do want to mention, I'll also show my PBO overdrive, but it will not work directly like one to one for you. Copy these settings though, where you can set your PBO limits to motherboard, the precision boost overdrive scaler to 10x, and then the platform thermal throttle limit to 89. The thing you can't copy though is this, the curve optimizer. These are my settings and they're for my CPU alone, they will not work for yours. I do recommend if you want to use curve optimizer that you start from flat negative 20 and then proceed to use apps like Prime95 or Ycruncher to be able to test your curve optimizer and how stable it is. Now I do want to mention, Warzone will often tend to run even unstable curve optimizer numbers, so do be careful. On that note, there's another important setting that I wanted to talk about, and that's the integrated graphics, which you can just disable for a small boost in FPS, specifically in Warzone and maybe in some other games, but I haven't honestly tested. No downside to turning it off though, you'd basically never want that feature to be on, and you'd never want to use the integrated graphics. Before you do save and exit though, I do want to mention that you can save an OC profile. And the way you do that is you'd basically go back to the initial menu you started from, and on the right hand side select OC profile, and then select the profile that you'd like to set your overclocking profile to save to, and then just click save. This way you won't lose your progress if something goes terribly wrong, and then you can just save and exit and go back to Windows to continue optimizing your PC. Luckily, because the 7800X3D is a very, very good CPU, the setup is extremely easy even within Windows after you've done the steps that I've aforementioned below. All you'd have to do is essentially have game mode on and make sure hardware accelerated GPU scheduling that would normally be there is off. I don't have it because I'm on a custom Windows, but if you would have it, make sure HAGS is off. 9 out of 10 times, it's better to keep it off. I'm also demonstrating over there that if you want, you can add your favorite games to the GPU performance list over there so the PC knows to always use maximum performance when in games, but honestly, it doesn't make that big of a difference, or if any at all. I did want to mention, for the power settings, you're going to want to essentially select high performance or ultimate performance, basically, because for the 7800X3D, you don't need something like balanced mode to let the Windows know what CCD it should use, so just use ultimate or high performance. Yet again, I'm on revision ultimate performance because I'm on a custom OS. For those of you that stayed this late in the video, I wanted to say these are all of my settings in one single place. If there's anything you have a question about, let me know. You can see my curve optimizer, you can see my timings, you can see basically everything I've done to the computer in a single spot. So if you want to copy anything or try anything for yourself, these are all my settings. Go at it. With that said, thank you for watching the video today. The 7800X3D is really easy to set up, but I just wanted to make sure that everybody gets this right so everybody can enjoy their performance. If you still have issues, I do actually optimize PCs. You can find the link in the description and I may be able to just help you out. Have a good one and enjoy.